home for joining me welcome back welcome back you man diamond k in here of course the diamond k show on fire tv radio on fire you can join us always on fire dash tv.com hope everyone had a great weekend a lot of stories to get into a lot of things that i want to uh dive into not sure if you had a chance to uh check this out uh but this story was it's all over social media and you know initially the video was very disturbing very disturbing uh now it has been announced that the prosecutors have actually dropped charges against the mom of the 14 year old uh her son uh her and her son charged in the killing of a man at a uh you know hot dog stand so uh, according to uh, reports, prosecutors have dropped all charges against Carlisha Hood and her 14-year-old son in the shooting death of 32-year-old Jeremy Brown. He cited a uh, further review of evidence in the case. Cell phone video shows Brown punching Hood three times before the shooting. And as I said, this... A video was floating around online, and many of you have had the opportunity to see it. If you haven't, definitely search for it. I did not want to show it here. Uh, I just I thought that it was it was too much. It was too too brutal. I was very angry after seeing the uh, the way that this uh, now deceased thirty two year old Jeremy Brown uh, punched this lady. So this um, Chicago neighborhood, a, a fast food stop, turned into a scene of tragedy and a scene of controversy. It was sparking all kind of debate online. Video went viral. And uh, the incident, as I said, resulted in the death of 32-year-old Jeremy Brown. So the debate is self-defense versus the appropriate use of force and and uh excessive force so the the two in the center of this incident uh, carlisha hood and her 14 year old son they were facing uh charges related to this shooting now there was an argument that happened between uh carlisha hood the 35 year old mother and jeremy brown inside maxwell street express so witnesses claim that the disagreement turned violent as brown repeatedly struck hood in the head and the uh the video of this uh, uh cowardly act by this male uh just very disturbing so there was chaos uh after the chaos hood's teenage son reportedly received some text messages from his mom who was in desperate need of help. Uh, mother allegedly orders the 14-year-old son to shoot at the uh, uh, the man. And um, situation escalates. 14-year-old made the uh, fateful decision, got the firearm, shot Brown in the back, instantly halting the attack on his mother. So, um, you know... You know, what what unfolded has become the point of contingency in a debate that uh, I just really saw all over social media. Um, and so as Brown attempted to flee, the teenager continued to chase him and shot him once again, this time from behind. So. Um, the mother was arrested, charged with murder following the shooting at the restaurant. Uh, she was in line for her food at Maxwell Street Express when the argument ensued between her and Jeremy Brown. Um, and during the argument, so during the argument, she texted her son. Obviously, uh, he was waiting in the car. OK, so that part needs to be clear. 
So uh, the retribution <laughs> was instant because she was in, you know, she was in there getting food for her and her, you know, kid text the son. I'm having trouble, whatever, come inside. Um, and the footage of the incident has people kind of divided. Carlisha and her son turned themselves in on uh, Thursday last week. Uh, both were charged with first degree murder. Now, tragically, uh, Jeremy Brown, who I did not agree with anything he did, hitting, hitting this woman, uh, unacceptable. He succumbed to his injuries. Uh, leaving the community, you know, grappling with these questions of, of justice and self-defense and uh, vigilanteism and uh, what are the limits of personal protection? Was the teenager justified in using lethal force to protect his mother? Or did his actions cross the line into excessive force? We've talked about this many times, usually not from this perspective. All the people involved are black. There's no race card to play. There's no uh, accusations of racism that we can, you know, lobby at someone. Supporters of the young teen urged that he acted out of instinct and innate sense of duty to protect his mother. You know how sons are about their moms. So can you imagine? Can you imagine your mother being in this kind of trouble? Mother calling, or texting rather, in distress. And you see this man, this adult, doing this to your mother? I, I don't know. He's a child. And... Uh, but like I said, a, a lot of folks are, are you know, up in the air about this. Up in the air about this. Prosecutors dropped the charges. Now, they cited emerging evidence. Obviously, it's got to be the video, the cell phone video. Prosecutors have dropped murder charges against Carlisha Hood and her 14-year-old son less than a week after she was accused of ordering her son to kill a man who had punched her in this uh, Southside hot dog stand. Court date had been set for next month. The prosecutors scheduled a hearing Monday when they announced that all charges were dropped. They later announced that murder charges against the teen had also been dismissed. In light of emerging evidence, today the Cook County State's Attorney's Office has moved to dismiss the charges against Carlisha Hood and her 14-year-old son, the office said in a statement. Now, the office did not specify what led to the decision, but as I said, the, the uh, decision to do this comes after the video surfaced over the weekend that appeared to show Jeremy Brown, the man who was killed, punching hood immediately before he was shot June the 18th. So uh, video widely distributed on social media, um, apparently by a bystander, does not show the shooting. Uh, the incident um, also was captured by high definition surveillance cameras, the officials said. And presenting their case last week, Prosecutor said that Brown, 32, punched Hood in the head at the Maxwell Street Express after the two got into an argument while waiting in line for food. Hood texted her son, who had come into the restaurant, as the argument turned physical. The boy took out the gun and shot Brown in his back. Brown ran from the store as Hood's son allegedly continued to fire at him. The teen and his mother followed Brown into the parking lot where she told her son to keep shooting and to kill him. Prosecutor said Hood was also accused of telling the son to then shoot Brown's girlfriend and of trying to take the gun from her son afterwards. The two left the scene and went home. Prosecutors said that Hood had a valid 
firearm owner's identification card and a concealed carry permit. She had no previous criminal record. And so the debate is going to continue. Uh, it was a tragic situation. Um, I'm not saying that he should have shot. But you get what you get. That man should have never punched that lady. Never punched that lady. It is uh it, it's just a sad situation. It's a it's a it's a sad situation. Um and thankfully her son was there. Um but uh I, you know, I wish that the uh the gentleman was not killed. I wish that he had better control of his actions. I wish that this man did not do this to this woman. I really, I really do. I really think that there, there's, you know, if you look at the video, there definitely seemed to be some mental crisis challenges there. He was just so angry. He was so angry. And the velocity, the, the, uh, the impact of the punches, you could hear them. It was, it was not pretty. It was not pretty. And in the heat of that moment, that's what happened. Uh, I do not, I mean, I, I think that it was self-defense. I mean, you know, some people will make the argument about him following him out. Um, but, you know, maybe the, the threat was not neutralized. Uh, a lot of a lot of things there, a lot a lot of things there, uh, but uh, in light of emerging evidence, Cook County State's Attorney has moved to dismiss charges against Carlisha Hood and her 14-year-old son. Definitely, let me know thoughts in the comment section. Of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok at the Diamond K Show. Of course, on Fire-TV.com is where you go to. Uh, keep up with what we got going on tap into on fire dash tv.com slash join go to on fire dash tv.com hit the join button and uh you can do this and uh, doing this allows you to access exclusive content while supporting this independent network on fire tv become an on fire plus member uh you help us continue to do what we do here you can always stream episodes of the Diamond K show at onfire-tv.com slash Diamond K. I am uh, here always, right? Because uh, if I'm not live, then you can check me out on demand. And speaking of on demand, music submissions, booking, or any kind of business info, contact me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. You need me to spin at your event, party, whatever. You can book me. DJ Diamond K at gmail.com is how you do that. Uh, of course, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with more of the show because there is so much more to get into. I got I got a bunch of stories that I want to talk about, and uh, we will do that and much more right after this. Thank you for tuning in to On Fire TV. We are a 24-hour independent news and entertainment channel. We produce original movies, documentaries, reality-based shows, and podcasts. On Fire TV is made possible because of viewer and listener support. Go to onfire-tv.com to become an On Fire Plus member. Your dollars and your support have kept us going, and we are just getting started. Welcome back. Welcome back. You made Diamond K. When I think about how far we have come with everything in, in the last 11 years, last 11 years. So I was working at a radio station and parted ways with that station. And I decided that I was going to launch my own platform. 2012 and i launched it from <laughs> from a room a, a spare room in my house and that's how things got started now 
at, over the years, we've we've gotten studios and different buildings and equipment and shows. And I initially started off just wanting to produce my show. And that turned to another show, to another show, to another show. And um, Radio on Fire and, and On Fire TV Network and all of the uh, exciting things that we're doing. And uh, it is really a blessing. And I'm so thankful uh, for how far we have come with everything. Uh, just this has been a, a heck of a journey. And uh, as I said in the, in the video, we're just getting started. We have so many things in store. Get lit. Get lit. Get lit. Everybody get lit right now. Get lit. Get lit. Get lit. Everybody get lit right now. So many of you can uh, empathize with this, wanting to get off work early, right? What, what, uh, what was the extent of what you would do to get off work early? Well, in uh, something that I find to be so bizarre, this gas station clerk, gas station clerk, who is uh, the black guy here, tells a friend, the lady, to get somebody to rob the store so he can leave work early. So uh, this Oklahoma convenience store clerk now facing embezzlement charges after reportedly asking a friend to find somebody to rob the joint so he can go home early. Tulsa police say that uh, Isaiah Jones told officers that a man walked into the store on June the 5th, handed him a note saying, give me all your money or I will shoot you. Isaiah complied and the suspect left with cash. Police did not specify how much money that the man stole. So that is the uh, the white gentleman. Uh, named Stephen Jones, no relation. A few days later, he was arrested for the robbery. Stephen Jones confessed and said that his friend, um, Aliyah Locke, the lady here, arranged this fake robbery at the request of Isaiah Jones so he could go home from his shift early. I mean, what kind of idiot is this? What, what, what kind of idiot is this? You want to go home early? Now all of them have been arrested. Uh, Stephen Jones, the white gentleman, charged with conspiracy to commit embezzlement and possession of a firearm after conviction of a felony. <laughs> Definitely see there's no brains there. I myself <laughs> would uh, advise people that this is not the recommended way to leave work early. And, uh, you know, friends like this, right? <laughs> who needs enemies? These uh, these brainiacs are going to be sitting in jail, and uh, I'm sure that they're going to have uh, uh, not a good outcome after, uh, after doing this <laughs> stupidity. Uh, definitely. Wow. <laughs> wow. Looking for food that feeds your soul? Hoodfellas Bistro and Catering is your local African-American-owned restaurant offering American cuisine. Located across from the courthouse, we offer daily jury specials to reward civic duty. Enjoy our full-service restaurant and fully stocked bar. Dine in, pick up, delivery, and catering. Our themed happy hours feature live music, handcrafted drinks, and weekly specials. Book your private event at hoodfellowsbistrocatering.com. So I don't know how many times I have to explain this to folks, but you need to leave animals alone. Many times we are, you know, in areas that animals live, right? And, and we need to coexist because we're, we're cohabitating, right? We're sharing spaces. But when you go out of your way to put your body parts in the area where vicious animals are, sometimes you get what you get 
This man almost met his maker after uh, just some reckless behavior. Take a look at this. <laughs> Two seconds, we'll do anything. Ah! Get, him, oh get him, get him, get him. Shark pulls him in the in the water at the uh Everglade Park. I mean, you know, you keep your body parts in the boat, man. What is what are you doing? What are you doing? Luckily, uh they were able to get him. Uh, I don't know how they did it. He's definitely lucky. Uh or or this one. Get lit right now. Sandtown get lit right now. RNG get lit right now. White lock get lit right now. Down the hill get lit right now. North of P get lit right now. Cherry Hill get lit right now. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man Diamond K in here, of course, the Diamond K show. Make sure you check me out on social media at the Diamond K show. Uh sad story to report here. I mean We've been seeing a lot of these instances where person is attacking themselves, family, uh, all this done in front of the children. Uh, but this story, like I said, sad. This Louisiana pastor shoots his wife in front of their three children before turning the gun on himself. So uh, this guy. The uh, police have uh, released the charges for this pastor. Did I say he was a pastor? Accused of shooting his wife and then himself. So uh, this uh, gentleman, Danny Purnell Jr., had a history of domestic violence against his wife. All right. So we're talking about somebody who is a coward. Coward. 25 years old. The pastor of Bright Morning Star Baptist Church in Pineville. Police believe that he shot his wife and then himself last week. Now, I just, you know, if you don't want to be with the lady anymore, if that is your goal then do that don't be with her anymore this is the the scene of this heinous act Purnell faces one count of aggravated domestic violence disturbing a business and disorderly conduct they would not disclose why he is not facing attempted murder charges Officers responded to the Hampton Inn in Macomb on June 21st, where Purnell had shot his wife, then himself, while their children were present. Both were taken to the University of Mississippi Medical Center for treatment, and according to the police chief, Purnell's wife is in stable condition. Purnell also survived his injuries and is in the custody of the Pike County Sheriff's Office. You can see that two strips of police tape blocked the hallway on the first floor of the Hampton Inn and Suites in Macomb. So after this shooting was reported in the building uh, about 4 p.m. on Wednesday last week, on the floor behind the police tape, there are towels and a pillow and what looks like blood, all that visible. In uh, in this, you know, sad story here. So what would cause this guy to do this? What would cause this guy to do this? Now, the Purnell's children were put in the custody of Mississippi's Department of Child Protective Services. Court records indicate that Purnell had a history of domestic violence against his wife. And this guy is in church, the bright morning star Baptist church, trying to tell other people how to get closer to God and how to live their life. We have to be very mindful of the people who we are following. In 2016, his wife filed a petition for protection from abuse. This was against Prenel. 
In that petition, she detailed instances where Prenell was violent with her, saying, I've been constantly getting beaten by my husband and I fear for my life and of my unborn child. She goes on to say that Prenell often pointed guns and threatened to kill her. This is the pastor? Are you kidding me? Before becoming a pastor at Bright Morning Star Baptist Church, Prenell was a deputy with the Rap uh, Rapids Parish Sheriff's Office starting in June 2022 until his resignation in December of that year. So uh, he was, according to um, the sheriff's office, Prenell was assigned to corrections division. Uh, and the uh, investigation of this shooting remains ongoing. Uh, so far, a hearing date has not been set for the charges that Prenell is currently facing. Just, I mean, just all kind of violence, all kinds of bad decision making, all kinds of stuff. And I don't think that anybody is, uh, uh, you know, confused about the fact that this guy was wrong, wrong for beating his wife, wrong for shooting his wife, and uh, doubly wrong for doing this in front of it with the children present. But of course, I'm sure he's going to have all kind of excuses why, all, all kind of reasons why. He's going to probably be sorry and crying, crying and and uh, talking about God and, and uh, people need to give him another chance, and all of that kind of uh, hoopla that hopefully nobody is buying. Hopefully nobody's buying. Of course, On Fire TV is a 24/7 digital platform. And what we like to focus on is the news, opinions, conversation, events. But we can't do this without your help. Support On Fire TV. Become a On Fire Plus fan club member. Get exclusive content, twice the content. And we have free content, and then we have content exclusively for our members. You can become a patron. You can do that. Click in the link below. Subscribe to us on YouTube. You can do that. However, you're hearing my voice now, whether it's on Apple Music, whether it's on Spotify, whether it's on uh, you know Google Podcasts, for any business, ads, mentions, unboxing, posts, collaborations, djdiamondk at gmail.com. Of course, you can join me here on the Diamond K Show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. live, or check me out on demand, of course, on YouTube. You can go there on Facebook. We are streaming on Twitter. We are streaming. And um, uh, we're going to do this. We're going to take a quick break, and then we are going to come back. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to talk about the BET Awards. We're going to recap that, talk about uh, some of the winners, all the winners. We're talking about all the winners, recap that event. Uh, it was definitely the talk of social media yesterday, and we're going to do that right now. After this, get lit, get lit, get lit. Everybody get lit right now. Get lit, get lit, get lit. Everybody get welcome lit. Welcome back, right welcome now. back. You man, Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K show on Fire TV, radio on fire. You can check us out on fire tv.com. So the BET Awards went down 2023. Of course, the annual award show uh, celebrated 50 years of hip hop throughout the night, featuring uh, special musical uh, medleys curated by the world famous DJ Kid Capri, uh, one of my favorite DJs, by the way. Anyway, the uh, 2023 BET Awards aired live from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. And the event, as I said, celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Lil Uzi Vert opened the show before um, letting the uh, hip hop pioneers grace the stage. 
Sugar Hill Gang, MC Light, who also served as the announcer for the evening. D Nice, Big Daddy Kane, and a uh, you know a sing along to the late Biz Markey's "Just a Friend." Other performances for the night included Fat Joe, Ja Rule, Jeezy, Kid and Play, Master P, Redman, Remy Ma, Soldier Boy, Styles P, Warren G, Trina, and Trick Daddy. Drake led the 2023 nominations uh, with seven. Uh, the, the nominees, uh, seven nominations, including Best Male Hip Hop Artist, Album of the Year for Her Loss with 21 Savage, and the Viewer's Choice Award. 21 Savage and Lizzo had five nominations each, while Beyonce, Burner Boy, Chris Brown, Ice Spice, and SZA followed with four. Of course, the legendary Patti LaBelle paid tribute to the late, great, Queen of Rock and Roll, Tina Turner. Busta Rhymes was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well-deserved. Busta Rhymes definitely put in the work. So uh, social media was abuzz with all of the, uh, you know, non, non-award-related non stuff. But that's what award shows are, right? It's, it's, it's the winners, but it's also what people are wearing, who's dating who, what is going on. So for album of the year, there was a tie. Don't see that too often. Beyonce's Renaissance album and SOS by SZA tied for album of the year. Best female R&B pop artist winner was SZA. Uh, best male R&B slash pop artist was a tie. And uh, <laughs> let me take a sip of water for this. Chris Brown and Usher tying in that category. Best group winner was Drake and 21 Savage. Uh, best collaboration winner was Wait For You, Future featuring Drake and Tim's. Best female hip hop artist winner was Lotto. And the best male hip hop artist winner was Kendrick Lamar. Video of the Year went to Kill Bill by SZA. Video Director of the Year is Spike Tay, Tiana Taylor. Now, the Best New Artist, Coco Jones. The Dr. Bobby Jones Best Gospel Slash Inspirational Award went to Bless Me, Maverick City Music, and Kurt Franklin. The Viewer's Choice Award winner, Break My Soul by Beyonce. Best International Act winner was Burner Boy. Nigeria, of course, is where he's from. Viewer's Choice, the best new international act uh, from Cameroon, uh, Libas, Libasani? <laughs> Libanaka. Libanaka. All right, screw that up. Uh, from BET Her, the winner, Break My Soul by Beyonce, best movie, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, best actor, um, Damson Idris, best actress, Angela Bassett. The Young Stars Award went to uh, Marcia Martin, Sports Woman of the Year Award, Angel Reese, Sports Man of the Year Award, Jalen Hurts. And we talked about that Lifetime Achievement Award, which went to Busta Rhymes. So, um, uh, I think that it was who who was it that said that it, I think it was Ice Spice. Ice Spice said that the BT Awards was ghetto, but it was a lot of fun. And um, I think that is what we have come to expect from the BET Awards. A lot of fun. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok at the Diamond K Show, of course. On fire-tv.com is where you go to stay in touch with me. I am here weekdays, 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. Check us out live at on fire-tv.com on YouTube, DJ Diamond K on Facebook, the On Fire TV Network. Uh, anywhere you get your podcast, just search the Diamond K Show and uh, you will see us right there. 
Support the On Fire TV network. Become an On Fire Plus fan club member. You can do that. Get exclusive content. We have our free content, and then we have additional content for our members and our subscribers. On Fire TV is a 24-7 digital platform for news, opinion, and conversation. We can't do this without your help. We cannot continue to do this without your help. So our supporters and our sponsors, our listeners have kept us going for so long. If you are enjoying the content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, and uh, definitely we appreciate it. I will be back here tomorrow, of course, 6 p.m., the Diamond K Show. See you guys tomorrow. Westport get lit right now. Green Mount get lit right now. North Ave get lit right now. Walbrook get lit right now. EV get lit right now. Woodlawn get lit right now. Shane get lit right now. Your Grove get lit right now. Get lit. Get lit. Get lit. Everybody get lit right now. Get lit. Get lit. Get lit. Everybody.